Hello. It's December 6rd. Zert 6. Sixerd, six, sixer. We got a whole bunch of news for you today here on Monday, starting off the week, the first week, I think, of uh, December. All right. Starting off with some more Activision Blizzard news. This one, specifically some Call of Duty Warzone devs, are staging a walkout over some layoffs that happened last Friday. Uh, last Friday, there were a bunch of QA testers uh, that were laid off uh, that were full-time positions. <clears throat> and now, uh, as of today... Uh, quote, those participating in this demonstration do so with the continued success of the studio at the forefront of their mind, the group wrote. The Raven QA department is essential to the day-to-day -day functioning of the studio as a whole. Terminating the contracts of high-performing testers in a time of consistent work and profit puts the health of the studio at risk. Uh, Activision did not respond uh, to a request for comment. However, as of about four hours ago, they did. And they said... Activision Publishing is a growing is growing its overall investment in its development and operation operations resources. A spokesperson told Kotaku in an email, "We are converting approximately 500 temporary workers to full-time employees in the coming months. Unfortunately, as part of this change, we have also notified 20 temporary workers across studios that their contracts would not be extended." Now, one of the big deals about this as well is from the ABK Workers Alliance. Uh, part of the walkout that I'm trying to find here, they basically said that they would have to reinstate their jobs as full-time positions, if I recall correctly. They basically like laid it out on the line. Uh, they said either fix this or, uh, or we're done. But uh, there's a lot of updates to this. There was an update about two hours ago uh, that said, according to the organizers of today's walkout, 60 Raven employees have participated so far, but the group called the response from management uh, so far disappointing. Uh, the actual quote is, leadership have repeatedly said that, they are, that these are not layoffs, but a termination of a contract, the group wrote. Alongside the walkout, Treyarch, which leads the development of Call of Duty Black Ops, announced uh, that all of its contract workers would be converted to full-time. They also posted the full statement uh, that uh, Kotaku has. I'll skim through it real quick. They kind of go into a lot of it. It says, these individuals were let go in good standing, meaning that they had not underperformed or committed any fireable offense. The majority of those who were not let go on December 3rd are still unsure about the status of their employment. These personal cuts come after five weeks of overtime and before an anticipated end of the year crunch. The QA team, which has been at the point at, at this point in time, mainly works on Call of Duty Warzone, so far has been reduced by just over 30%. Uh, this team was told multiple times by Raven leadership that there were positive departmental changes coming. These upcoming changes were also used as the reason why no member of the team received standard promotions or raises they were meant to uh, be in place by March of 2021. Twelve individuals who have been let go so far are considered by their colleagues to be essential to the everyday functioning of the Raven QA team. Several of those who were let go recently relocated to Wisconsin in anticipation of the return to in-person work. Fuck, man, they had also relocated. They did so without relocation assistance from Raven due to reass reassurance... Ah reassurances that the studio that their workload was consistent from the studio that their workload fuck they didn't even pay for it man Call of Duty Warzone which recently announced to be uh, the release of a new map and an and integration with Call of Duty Vanguard title earns 5.2 million dollars a day Jesus Christ that is just so unbelievably fucked up that's just fucked up. Like, they moved across the country 
on their own dime and then they were let go. <sighs> sucks. Really does suck. Uh, in response to the events on Friday, uh, this is also from the same uh, statement. In re response to the events on Friday, of Friday, the Raven QA team and other members of the Ravens uh, staff will be walking out with a singular demand. Every member of the QA team, here's what I was trying to find, including those terminated on Friday, must be offered full-time positions. Those participating in this demonstration do so with the continued success of the studio at the forefront of their mind. The Raven QA department is essential to the day-to-day -day functioning of the studio as a whole. Terminating the contracts of high-performing testers in a time of consistent work and profit puts the health of the studio at risk. Additionally, these actions go against the positive culture that uh, Raven has created over the years. The end goal of this walkout is to ensure that continued growth of Raven as a studio and to foster a positive community for everyone who works there. Yeah. Yeah, I said million, not billion. Um, I mean, shout out to like, uh, not shout out. That seems weird. The The bravery that this group is doing with that walkout is kind of insane. Um, the fact that they are putting literally their jobs on the line uh, as well in order to uh, hopefully get uh, some full-time positions for their, uh, their co-workers and uh, most likely friends as well. Really says a lot. So I hope that stuff works out. Um, that'll obviously be a developing story. We'll be covering that throughout the week. We will see. We will see. Yeah, that's a lot of walkouts as well for ABK. Um, Activision Blizzard. Wait, AB, what? Is it ABC? Not ABK. No, no, no. ABK is Activision Blizzard. It is ABK, but what does the K stand for? Activision Blizzard King. Oh, King. Everyone in chat was saying King, and I was like, guys, Blizzard is not the King. What are you talking about? They're not Kings, guys. What are you go? <laughs> no. King is who make Candy Crush. They're a part of that. They bought them a long time ago. <laughs> That's why. That's why it's King. Anyways, man, wild. Absolutely wild. What else do we got on the docket for news? Oh, I, I, I just straight up skipped over this. We've got new releases for the week. We're going to insert those here. The upcoming games for December uh, for the week of the 6th. Tomorrow is the full release of Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker. Early access took place over the weekend. And let me tell you, it uh, once you got in game, it was fine. Getting in game, though not the easiest thing uh not only are there massive amounts of queuing there's also issues with the queue process where you can get 2002 out of the queue and then start the whole process over if you don't log in fast enough and uh yeah a lot of problems with all that stuff so overall once you do get in game though it's generally fine you just have to get in game that's the big issue and uh it's easier said than done uh, we've got the Stranger Things Battle Pass for Smite uh, fans. That's happening tomorrow as well. Thymesia is coming out. That's a PC game. I know nothing about what that is. Spellforce 3 Reinforced also coming out. Uh, that's a multi-plat uh, game. PC, PS5, PS4, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and S. Launches tomorrow. Halo's Infinite. No, Halo Infinite's campaign. There you go. Uh, it's launching on Wednesday. Uh, we'll get to the reviews of that in just a sec. There's also the Salmon Max Beyond Time and Space Remastered. Comes out on Wednesday. Uh, Monster Rancher 1 and 2 DX on the 9th. Loop Hero coming out for uh, Switch on the 9th. Hey, if you have not, not played Loop Hero yet, uh, definitely pick that up on the Switch. And I would say even if you have played it on the PC, you probably know how good that game is and how good it would be on the Switch. So, might be worth it. Uh, and then Siberia, the world before comes out. Not sure exactly what that is. And after the fall for VR comes out on the ninth as well. And the biggest release of the week, everyone knows it. It's Monopoly Madness that launches on the ninth as well. Let's take a look at the, uh, reviews for the hollows. Also known as the halos. Uh, I've not looked at these yet. 
The aggregate review for Halo Infinite is... Out of 93 reviews, it's sitting in 86 right now. 94% recommended. Let's find some headlines for it. Destructoid says, 9 out of 10, if I had one piece of advice for people on the fence with Halo Infinite, it would be not to worry about the open world and embrace now, uh, embrace how it's handled here. I was incredibly worried at first that 343 wouldn't be able to resist the siren song of other major publishers, but the restraint here is appreciated. This is an extremely 2021 Halo, and I think it's going to win over both lapsed players and diehards. Big if true. Big if true. Uh, EGM, 8 out of 10. Halo Infinite handles the burden of the franchise's long history gracefully. At times, as with the campaign story, it feels like developer 343 Industries is weighed down by Master Chief's uh, Mjolnir's armor. What? It's kind of a weird... But Infinite's bolder design choices, like its open-world environment and grapple shot, make it feel exciting and new. The multiplayer might play it a little safe to appease longtime fans, but the worst you could say about it is that it feels like old-school Halo and that it's doing something right. It's, Halo's made, it's Halo made for Halo fans, but there's enough novelty to keep it feeling fresh game informer gives it a 9.3 out of 10 a big game with a lot to offer through long-term multiplayer engagement and subsequent campaign plays the whole thing feels rooted in legacy but looking to the future GameSpot gives it a 9 out of 10 halo infinite transforms the series two decade old formula for the better giving protagonist master chief more characterization and implementing an open world and giantbomb.com which I would actually say, if you read any inter or interview, if you read any review, uh, definitely go check out Giant Bomb's review uh, from Jeff Gersman. Not only because Jeff Gersman is a uh, fantastic re game reviewer and writer, his review also says a lot of stuff about the state of reviewing video games this year, and uh, it's kind of comical. Kind of comical. Jeff Gersman's still a threat, as it turns out. Uh, he did go on to say, overall, the Halo, uh, the Halo Infinite. Overall, Halo Infinite is a great, but something of a mixed bag. Fans of the genre will certainly enjoy the additional mobility granted by the grappling hook, while the rest of the gameplay delivers that well-polished Halo experience that shooter heads have come to know and love over the decades. It's a bit of a shame that the story doesn't quite stick the landing, but add in the fantastic and free multiplayer, and you've got a really solid foundation for whatever comes next, be that a story expansion or an eventual full-on sequel. IGN gives it a 9 out of 10. Halo Infinite's single-player campaign is exactly what this series needed. It brings out the best in Master Chief's unique and satisfying combat style while leveraging old ideas to create memorable new moments. Its story falls short of new and veteran players, but it was worth the six-year uh, wait. And one more. PC Gamer, 78 out of 100. Very specific over at PC Gamer. Halo Infinite can't quite deliver on being an open-world throwback, but it's the best shooting the series has seen to date. Huh, okay. Now I'm actually... Ollie, did you really just do that? Don't don't let pets into the newsroom. That's all I'm saying. Don't let pets into the newsroom. I don't think there's any others we want to read. Now I'm kind of... I wonder, like... Huh, I don't know. That's going to be interesting, I suppose. Oh, you want to be on camera, huh? You got to be a star, kid. Look at this dumb dog. Look at this silly dog. When was the last time you played a Halo game? What do you mean? Like in general? Uh, Last week? Halo Infinite? <laughs> uh, anyways, what else do we got in the news? Oh, goes along with Halo stuff. Uh, John Lenneman, uh, who does a lot of the Digital Foundry stuff, uh, said, My biggest complaint regarding Halo Infinite really is that the disc doesn't contain a playable game. This will be the first Halo game you can't really own as a standalone copy. This is not a good trend, and I hope Microsoft reconsiders things like this. So wait, how... How do you play the game if you don't have an internet connection? How 
How does that work? Do you have to have an internet connection to play? Weird. 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 Uh, all right. So uh, we hinted at it a lot during trailer time. The biggest news that I've seen leads to a lot of speculation. And I wouldn't say biggest news, really. The news that I'm really excited about. Jeff Keeley came out and said a statement in an interview, uh, which I think USA Today. Um, he was also talking about his statement on Activision Blizzard, uh, which we talked about last week, at least on stream. I don't know if we covered that in the news. Um, the interview is on USA Today, like I said, which is a very good Elden, or a very good Elden. That's me typing and also type uh, talking at the same time. Um, he talks about the Elden Ring stuff. It's on USA Today. Sorry to finish my statement. He goes on to say, though, if I can find it, Maybe I'll just go back to the actual post so I can get the full quote. Okay. He basically says that there are four to five reveals on the scale of Elden Ring. Now, that's a bold statement. I guess they're making five sequels to Elden Ring. <laughs> um, I mean, reveals... I, it depends on what his wording for reveal is. Because that would mean that the game isn't announced yet, is how I would take. But Elden Ring was announced. We just didn't have a reveal of the gameplay. Oh, he's definitely a salesman. And he's definitely a marketing person. But I'm just wondering, like, what that would be. If we think about it, we could maybe see some Mass Effect. We could maybe see some Dragon Age. We could maybe see Breath of the Wild 2. We could maybe see Final Fantasy 16. I'm gonna keep holding out hope that uh, there was a there was a rumor or a leak a couple weeks ago that we would be getting a Chrono Cross remaster. If they somehow pull that off and we get to hear the scars of time. That'd be a pop-off moment right there. That'd be a huge pop-off moment. But I really don't know, like, four to five big uh, reveals. I don't know. It's got me excited. It's got me excited for Thursday. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Uh, moving along to a stranger headline, uh, but a serious one. Uh, Sony... As of, I think this happened on Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon. They have fired a PlayStation executive who allegedly appeared in a pedophile sting video. He allegedly set up a meeting with a person who said he was a 15-year-old boy on the Grinder app. Uh... It gets a little bit weirder when this story broke, I do believe, thanks to a uh, pretty big push coming out of live stream fails, uh, where I think like this content creator sets up these stings or whatever. Uh, yeah. So that's a thing that I guess happened. At least he was, uh, you know, fired. A lot of times when they do these um, 
like civilian sting videos and it doesn't go through a proper legal uh, thing, you know, whatever process that uh, nothing is done to, uh, to, to, you know, pedophiles like this. Cause there's no legal uh, methodology set in place. And uh, they kind of just return to, to normal life. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, he lost his job, though, which, you know, that's good. That's a good start, especially because he was a PlayStation executive. Jesus Christ. How are the console warriors handling that, chat? That's the question. <laughs> yeah, well, at least my executives, they don't get caught in a pedophile sting, huh? How about that? How about that one? I'm going to go boot my Xbox up now. I got a PlayStation blog. Speaking of PlayStation. On uh, Horizon Forbidden West. Let me see if they say anything of value here. They, they bit like, what? I wonder why they're not doing videos for this shit. Do you think we get some more Horizon on uh, Thursday? I don't know. Maybe. We might be able to. Maybe. Who knows? Who could say? Who could say? Could be. Could be the case. These blogs are just kind of like, they're not doing it for me. They're not doing it for me. Uh, What is this? We've got some uh, Xbox Game Pass announcements that I guess are happening. Uh... Wait, is this an official... Is Xbox Game Pass for PC an official account? There was this thing. Raptor Scream, I swear to God. I'm literally looking at that image and talking about it right now. <laughs> Jesus fuck, Raptor Scream. <laughs> you drive me insane with how crazy and annoying you are. Uh, so they did like this weird TGA confidential like faux email... Uh, where they talk about uh, their day one PC games pass coming in the future, which includes Total Warhammer 3, Redfall, Stalker, Stalker 2, Atomic Heart, Slime Rancher 2, Plague Tale Requiem, Starfield, Paparazzi, Space Warlord, Organ Trading Simulator, Replaced, Somerville, Iodin, Chronicle Rising, Rising, and Scorn. And then there's two... No, not two. There's four that are redacted that I guess are being announced at the Game Awards. It says unannounced day one PC games at the Game Awards coming in the future. Are we going to see Fable? Maybe we see some fable. I don't think Avowed is going to be there. I think we might see fable. Fable's a possibility. Some gameplay of fable could be pretty pog. Could be the case. Could be the case, chat. I guess we'll see. Uh, then we also have the PlayStation Now games for December. John Wick Hex, Final Fantasy X, and X2 HD Remaster, Splitlings, and the hottest and everyone's favorite, the more the most talked about game in the past two weeks on social media. That's right, chat. Grand Theft Auto 3, the definitive edition. Coming to PlayStation Now. Oh, man. Oh, boy. That's a thing. That's a thing. All right, chat. Do we got any key chat alerts that we need to uh, go over here before we wrap up JPN? I'll just uh, browse the new list and see what we got. Atlas has added an unannounced game on its Steam page. Oh, Persona 5 or Al. 
is being announced on Thursday, and I bet you it comes out Friday. That's my hot take. That's my hot take. Uh, well, I actually have a lot of stuff here. We got, uh, you know, let's let's run the button. Let's run the button. Let's, let's just do it. Here we go. Here we go. We got a bunch of key chat alerts. Uh, Nintendo loses court case over eShop pre-order restrictions. So what are the ramifications of that? Uh... Nothing, I guess. They just lost the case. So, maybe it sets precedent, something like that. Not sure. Not sure. Uh, we're getting an Unreal Engine 5 experience of The Matrix Awakens. Kind of weird. Oh, that's right. We This happened on Friday. Uh, Take-Two Interactive is... Currently uh, suing uh, Hazelight, Hazelight Studios, uh, which is the creator of It Takes Two, because of the name. So that's good. It's great. Keep on keeping on there. You know, you guys are crushing it. You guys are crushing it. Jesus. Uh, Jabba Wookie does uh, also remind me Final Fantasy XIV launched uh, Ed Walker over the weekend via early access of its title uh, or of the expansion. And uh, because of all the issues, they're getting uh, seven days free uh, because of all the queues um, to people that are currently subscribed. That's good. That's good. And Neville says meow. I think that's that. I think that's that. We're gonna we're gonna wrap it up here on JPNN. Neville, do you want to be on camera? Huh? Do you wanna you wanna show your face, Neville? Huh? Because you've been meowing in all these videos. No, no. I'm gonna catch you. I'm gonna catch you. Send us, send us off in the show. Get us out of here. Okay, Neville, why aren't you meowing? Is this all you wanted? Or are you just doing this because you got picked up? And that's Jay Pinnon. Thank you guys for coming out. We'll see you on uh, probably Wednesday. We'll probably do a Jay Pinnon on Wednesday. Uh, maybe start a little bit earlier so we can get in before uh, Halo launches. Because I think Halo is at 1 p.m. Eastern and we start at noon Eastern. All right. Have a great rest of your day. That's the news. Thank you so much. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.